Riley Tyler has been in our community for a long time, but this is my first time meeting him. How's that possible? I love storytellers. That's part of the reason I created this show. And Charlie loves to tell stories, and he has lots of them. Charlie's deeply involved in church activities, has spent a ton, ton of time with youth sports, and now that he's retired, he spends almost all of his time with volunteer efforts aimed at making our community a better place. One thing in particular is coming up real soon, Dining with the Dead. Haven't heard of it? It's an evening spent at Green Lawn Cemetery visiting with characters from our community's past. People like Ike Stockton, who was more wanted by the law than Billy the Kid. You can meet Navajo Bill. And in years past, you could have met people like Orville Ricketts. Members from our community, Charlie being one of them, get into full period costume, assume the identity of one of these characters, and tell you their story while you listen and interact with them. And enjoy some local great local barbecue. The whole thing is a fundraiser for the local Kiwanis Club to help fund their efforts to help local children. Does it get any better than that? I've been told Charlie's a character. I love that! I have a feeling I'm going to have to decide which stories I have time to leave in on this episode, but I know we're going to have a great ride. Want to see how it goes? Come along for the ride in Ken's Think Tank. Ken's Think Tank is made possible by the following sponsors. Trattoria de Bernadoni is Farmington's authentic Italian restaurant. Rooted deep in Italian history, the Bernadoni family treats your family to food that loves you back. Drop in and tell them Ken sent you. You'll be glad you did. From the moment you walk into the cave men's grooming, you understand this is no average barbershop. This is a place for men in their grooming needs. In a world full of guys, be a man. Drop by the Cavemen's Grooming and join the revolution. 505 Motorsports in Farmington is awesome. They sell vehicles of all makes and models, as well as four-wheelers, motorcycles, boats, RVs, and more. They even offer in-house financing and co-signment. So, Charlie, you are... Um, you're... You're like a professional volunteer. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't call myself. I, I mean, I, I, I've lived here, Ken, in the area since uh, 1981. So yeah. this is home for me. This is where my wife and I raised our, our one and only daughter. But uh, but I've done a lot of things here in the area. I originally moved here with a oil and gas supply company. We were manufacturing. You know, we were selling supplies to all the oil and gas industry right. people, and then I ended up marrying my wife here. After I married Jerry, uh, her folks offered me a job to go to work with them, and so I went to work for a process equipment service company okay. out on Bloomfield Highway. Gosh, I was with them from 1988 until I retired. I think I retired in like 2015. Okay. I retired early. I just oil and gas market was down at that time right. and I just kind of took the time to get out. Sure. And uh, my brother-in-law's continued to run the business but uh, I'm still on the board of directors but I don't have to do anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, when you say I'm a volunteer, yeah, I, I, uh, I volunteer. I'm, I do a lot of things. I'm active with a lot of Christian organizations in the area. You just came from a, a board meeting. Yeah, that, um, I'm on the board of directors for Navajo Ministries. Right. Four Quarters Home for Children, and that's uh, that's near and dear to my heart right now. Where they're trying to do a fundraiser with their uh, bi fly fishing tournament coming up here on the San Juan oh, that's River. Right. Yeah, and, that's uh, a big one. That's a big one. That they have people come from all over the nation. They that. do. Yeah. La last year, I can't remember how many tens of thousands of dollars that raised, but but uh, we were just talking about the bi fly, and we just finished up doing the uh, Navajo Ministries also runs Vertical Radio, and Vertical Radio right. transmits the uh, Connie Mack World Series. So it we does. just finished up the Connie Mack World Series, and and that was always fun to, to listen to and be involved in the in They the do such a great job of that. Well, I mean, you know... That's professional-level commentary. Those, those, those guys do a good job, and there. a lot of them are old baseball coaches. Right. And, and people who played, and Kirk Carpenter, and yeah. I know many of the other guys that, you know... Uh, Marlon White gets involved with them, and Kevin Wilcox is involved with them. I, I know numerous ones that, that did that because sports was always near and dear to me as well. When I first moved here in 1981, I got involved in uh, 
I played football most of my life. Just high school. I never played college ball, but right. I, I always thought I was a Division One prospect, but the coaches didn't think so. so. <laughs> You know, or, you know, the offer the offers were there if I wanted to try to walk on the sure. teams, but I didn't I didn't try to do any of that kind of stuff. Right. But but when I moved here in 1981, I got involved in refereeing high school football. Okay. And I refereed high school football for uh, 31 years. Wow. And finally had to give that up. Uh, kids got too fast for me, and I, or else I got too slow. I guess that was, <laughs> that's more probably what happened was I just got too slow to keep up with the pace of the game. But uh, right. I still miss it. It's you know, football was just one of those sports that uh, I just I just love football. But I love all sports. I don't care if it's basketball. And so were you doing multiple, because at the time there was only Farmington High. Well, yeah, and, we had, but, uh, uh, but you know, Aztec I mean, Bloomfield, my gosh, oh that? yeah, I, we had fun times. But I mean, <laughs> sure. I, I also refereed all the way up. I did the, you know, I guess the only claim to fame I had when you do state, state finals and things like that, I did the I did one state final one time between Artesia and and Lovington, and and that was back when they were both in the same district and the same conference. And oh my gosh! But when I go back and look at the old game films, because any time I did the state finals, I'd always request a copy of game film to evaluate the officials, and we'd use it for training and stuff. But when they introduced the official, when they introduced the players at that game, one of the players they introduced was. Uh, went on to become the middle linebacker for the Chicago Bears after he played. Really? You know, for for a number of years at, at UNM. And so, you know, you, you you find somebody that's, you know, now in the Hall of Fame and in the NFL, and that's that's pretty cool to say, oh, I refereed him when he was in high school. You know, it's like, that was pretty neat. But don't we love all this construction in Farmington? We do. There's not a road. <laughs> is there a road in Farmington that's not under construction right now? I think the only ones that aren't are the ones they've already been on. <laughs> yeah. You're probably right, Ken. You're probably right. <laughs> well, no, I, uh, you know, you were asking before. I mean, you know, yeah, I'm on that home ministries uh, board of directors, but I'm also on the board of directors for the local Four Corners of Mayus community, which is a Christian organization that's a, that's a, uh, a lot of different churches have people who have been on uh, what we call the walk to Emmaus. And it's just a way to, uh, to get people into a Christian retreat setting. Okay. We, we have a men's and a women's walk. Stay involved heavily with the church. And so, you know, there's always things you can get involved in. Uh, so you're just hopping from one to well, the next. You know, I figure <laughs> if you're going to be retired, you might as well keep yourself busy. And if I Absolutely. I don't play that. I don't play golf well enough. <laughs> To want to play every day, but I'd, I'd love to play a lot more than I've been playing. Sure. But, uh, but I had a daughter, and so I tried my daughter in all kinds of sports activities. I tried her in soccer. I tried her in volleyball because I knew she was going to be tall. Well, she hated the ball. She, the ball hurts, you know. It's like, oh, my gosh, you know. I tried her in basketball, and, uh, you know, it, it was like, but as an only child, when I coached children's sports, I found out real easily you find the kids who had siblings because they knew how to fight for the ball and go get the Yeah, ball. that's right. <laughs> People who were only children, or, or as my daughter calls herself, the lonely child, <laughs> they, they, they just expect people to give them the ball, and that ain't gonna happen that way. You know, you gotta, right. you gotta go uh, rebound the ball, you gotta go kick the ball, and, and so, it, but we never got very far, except, except, I started turning golf, and the golf pro out at the country club, he asked me to say, hey, could you come help out? And, maybe help ramrod some of the kids that are in the, the junior program out there. And I'm yeah, like, sure. I'm, you know, I'll take off my lunch hours, you know, whatever, spend it out here with you. Well, I found three girls. This was the very first year that Pieter Vista was opening as a high school. And uh, I found these three girls that were all going into the eighth grade. And I knew from being in the NMAA that, you know, eighth graders could play high school sports. Right. If it's not offered to the junior high, you can play high school sports. Well, I found these three girls that were all, for young kids, were good golfers. Uh-huh. And I said, you know what? I could pick you three girls up because I know Piedra Vista is going to need a junior varsity golf team. Right. Well, I found out real early, uh, once I started taking them to golf practice, girls golf, unlike boys golf, girls golf, you're on a set of sticks, you're on the varsity. 
There is no triad. Really? It was, it was, like, it was like there was no, there was, there was no, uh, there were not enough girls to play sports. Okay. You know, right. like all the girls wanted to play softball, and all the girls sure. wanted to play volleyball basketball, and basketball, or volleyball. Right. And they didn't want to play golf, and so these three girls, all lettered as eighth graders on the varsity of Rio de Vista, lettered for five years, and their senior year, they won the state title. Really? And that was the very first state title that Piedra Vista ever won in any sport was girls golf. Really? And so, uh, you know, I'm kind of proud of my daughter. Yeah. But the surprising thing is, where I was going with the story, I know I rambled. Where I was going with the story is it embarrassing to be beat by your daughter. <laughs> when she's a, when sopping wet, she's 150 pounds, you know? Yeah, yeah. But she's almost six foot tall, and, and she's got a fluid swing, and she just... Yeah, golf it's, is it's about the ball a ton, and, and uh, it's like yeah, it's about finesse, not yeah. not power. And so, uh, she yeah. could always out putt me and out chip me. Now I still get to play golf with my daughter, and I mean that's a lifelong sport, oh, yeah. and so it's it's yeah. fun to go back there and do that. You're not in. You're not a member of Kiwanis. Local yeah, Kiwanis. it's it's the uh, right. Kiwanis Del Sol who puts on the Dining with the Dead right fundraiser. But you, and, and so that's an annual fundraiser that Kiwanis does. It's, it's called a, Dining with the Dead. And but and you've been involved with it. I've been involved for, with it from the very beginning. Right. Um, it was started by... Uh, Jim McQuarrie? McQuarrie, thank right. you. Yeah, Jill and her husband started Dining with the Dead. And I, I was I was always impressed. Uh, they, had, they had seen a presentation in Tucson, Arizona. They brought it here in their local Kiwanis club decided to do this and uh, as a fundraiser right and it's for their children's charities whether it's shop with a cop or coach for kids or, right and so they knew me from the standpoint that I had a loud speaking voice and my time on the football fields and 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 then I also had done, done a lot of community theater back in West Texas and so they knew well you know he could probably do this kind of stuff and the Basically, the precept behind it, or the concept behind it, is every year they have a committee that selects ten, probably 10 to 12 people that you're going to recreate in Greenlawn Cemetery. Okay. Now, not, not all of them are actually buried at Greenlawn Cemetery, but they are all people who were special to this region and the, and the growth of, of Farmington and San Juan County. Right. And so they'll give you, the Historical Society helps write, gives you information about the uh, character that you're playing, but then you basically help formulate your own script as if you are that person. Right. And you stand at their gravesite and you basically uh, tell their story about how they ended up in Farmington, why they're here, what they're doing, and that when they, when they were born, when they died and maybe how many kids they had. I mean, it's just, you're sharing their personal story. So you take on the character <laughs> of, of this person. Absolutely. And and so you're portraying them as if they're, you, you are them. Yeah, and you're dressed, right. and you're dressed in period costumes. Okay. And they have, uh, the Kiwanis Club has guides that guide people through the cemetery. Because one of the things we, we talked about a lot when we first started this seven years ago was we have to be mindful that we are in a graveyard yes but yet also in here we are passing the old Tibbetts junior high school yeah the old Farmington high school that football field right out there that we just passed uh -huh. was the very first cemetery in Farmington New was it really and when Greenlawn Cemetery was built they moved all the graves from this this was before Farmington high school was built here they moved all the graves up to Greenlawn Cemetery Wow. So that that's a little historical fact about. I did not know that. You know that 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 used to be. So when people play ball out there, they're playing on an old cemetery ground. Wow. But anyway, the cemeteries used to be a place for weekend gatherings. I mean, they'd have parties. They'd have part. You know, they'd Absolutely. all come together to refurbish the cemetery or have a dance out at the cemetery. And right. So it was it was a time of partying, but maybe not on the gravesides themselves. Sure. But yeah, <laughs> it was caretaking for the settlers who went before you. I sure. Mean, you had that that sense of care and so we have to be kind of mindful in leading the leading the people through the tours you know we use the roads as much as possible but it is a walk 
Uh, you see 10 to 12 different characters or different actors that particular night telling you different stories. Uh, I've been in it for seven years. I've only played the same person twice, but I've played a lot of a lot of interesting characters. Uh, probably one of my one of my favorite stories was last year I was playing uh, a guy by the name of Washington Cox. Well, he's actually buried out at Cedar Hill, which was where he was a cattleman, and that's okay. where that's where his cattle, you know, uh, were stationed was out around Cedar Hill area. And this was back before you had ranches and you had barbed wire and all this kind of stuff. Right. And their cattle just roamed everywhere. But uh, I happened to be up at, up at the Bar D Chuck Wagon. And when I was up at the Bar D Chuck Wagon, I went and heard a cowboy poet. And that was one of the deals you did before you went in to hear the Chuck right. Wagon game. And the cowboy poet, he was a cowboy. He was a real cowboy. Yeah. I, you could just tell from his poetry, <laughs> he was a real cowboy. And I just, I, I went up to him after the show and I said, man, I gotta tell you, I was mighty impressed with what you were sharing. And I said, I'm actually playing a cowboy this year and I've been on cattle drives and, you know, I'd like to get some of your input about cattle drives and stuff. And I said, I'm playing a guy down in Farmington, a deal called Dining with the Dead, where we have five minutes to, five minutes is not a long time to recreate a, right. that person's life. But I said, I've got five minutes to recreate what this guy was all about. And, uh, and he said, well, who you who you're emulating or who you doing? I said, well, I'm doing Washington Cox. He said, well, my, my relatives are all from Cedar Hill. And Washington Cox happens to be my great-grandfather. I went, you got to be really? kidding me, man. <laughs> oh, man. And so he and I met, and he gave me stories about his great-grandfather that he had that had been passed down through the lineage oh, of, of him. Wow. So I thought, I thought, this is really cool. You know, you get to talk to an actual relative and he said, yeah, he said, we were, he said, we've been cattlemen all of our lives. And, and uh, I ran, I ran cattle for a long, long time until I've, I've retired now. And, you know, so this year I happen to be doing uh, Alfred Ulysses Graves. Okay. Who happens to be, his father-in-law is Washington Cox. And so I happen to be doing his grandfather this year. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so it's, and he and I have been trying to hook up, and I've been trying to get some more information for my, uh, for my talk about Alfred Graves, because this is now actually his grandfather. Wow. And so, it, you know, you have those, and then you have some that are more contemporary. So a few years back, I played Orville Ricketts. And of oh, course, right. you know, Orville Ricketts was a newsman in the area, and Ricketts Park was named for Orville Ricketts. Right. And, you know, so you you played, sometimes you played a more contemporary person that everybody would know, and then sometimes you're playing people that, you know, uh, have, you would never know who they are. Right. And it's called Dining with the Dead because there's also barbecue out there, Oh, yeah. Right? Uh, spare rib barbecue uh, comes out there and puts on a barbecue. So the tickets cost 25 oh, bucks. Man, that's the best barbecue. And, and you know, you, you can't help but... but uh, that love their barbecue, so they set up tables and things out there on the roadways that are in the, uh, and so they'll serve everybody a meal. I, as an actor, I've never once eaten the meal because I'm always, <laughs> you know, I, I don't want to eat and, you know, if I'm wearing a beard or wearing sure. a mustache, I can't get things on me and, and then you're in costume and so, <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's great meals and don't get me wrong, I, I love to eat spare rib, but uh, Jimmy's one of my yeah. favorite people in town, but anyway. I love Jimmy. But, uh, but yeah, so uh, twenty-five dollars tickets are available at Howard's Cleaners. Okay. Here in town, uh, last I knew, we were under a hundred tickets left to sell to sell out. Really? And every year it's been a sellout. And every year we have people that show up at the gate and say, "Can I come through? I couldn't get I a couldn't ticket, get but tickets, I can yeah. I, I come through?" And so sometimes <laughs> there are people who maybe don't show up the night of, or maybe they bought a ticket and forgot about it. Or, sure. you know, so sometimes they'll they'll run and they'll tell people, well, stick around, maybe maybe we can get you in, and maybe right. we can't, but uh, but it's just a matter that whatever they can do, they'll, they'll try to do to Kind of a limit on the amount of... Yeah, yeah, they've only got so many meals prepared, and right. there's only so many people that they can have come through there, sure. and then the, the local Kiwanis Club, a lot of those people will dress in period pieces and, you know, you know, serve food, 
and be there to help you out and then the guides will take people around the guides will actually tell stories about this character or that character as they're kind of moving from one place to another and it's it's kind of like outdoor theater that's exactly what it is yeah i mean we're only given we're only given five minutes I mean, that doesn't sound like a lot of time, but when you're doing a monologue for five minutes, it can be fairly lengthy. Sure. And so you're you're doing a five-minute monologue. People can't ask questions at the end. Sometimes we might know the answer. Sometimes we won't know the answer to it. We always put on a performance for uh, McCormick, or excuse me, McKinley Elementary. Okay. Which is right up there near Green Lawn Cemetery, and their teachers use it as a historical, as a history lesson for their classes. Yeah. So they come over for free on the Friday before, and they tour through, and we kind of give them. Oh a, wow! We get to do a, we get to do like a dress rehearsal to kind of. Yeah. You know, be sure we can get through it, and these kids get a lot of history. How neat is that? As a as a kid, instead of reading about history in a history book, you you go out and you get to kind of meet people that. As a kid, you may be thinking, I don't know how young they are, but you may be questioning whether this is actual the person well, they, that you're portraying, or... <laughs> they, they know, I mean, they know. But yeah, I mean, you're, you're bringing over the fifth graders from the school. The, the, the yeah. history teachers bring over the fifth graders from the school and tour them through every year. And that's always a that's always a fun time because I've, I've had kids come through that know me. They say, yeah. you know, I know you. I go to church with you, you know, it's like... I it, just think it's a really neat idea. Well, thank you, Ken. I, I I do too. That's why Jill and Paul, you know, every time they ask me, I'll I'll volunteer. I, I don't know if I'll ever not do it unless I wasn't going to be in town that particular week. This event is September seventh. September seventh. September seventh. Uh, and you can get tickets at Howard's Cleaners. Howard's Cleaners is the only place that's selling the tickets. Okay. The last I heard, they didn't have many left, but it cost twenty five dollars for a meal and for a night of entertainment, and everybody. You, you won't be disappointed if you come, and I right. just encourage anybody who's out there, go by there and get your tickets and, uh, and come enjoy a good evening. Uh, well, it sounds like fun. I mean, it sound, it seems strange to say, hey, come on to the cemetery, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a ton of fun. But it does, it sounds like fun. You get If you like outdoor theater, you'll like this thing. Yeah. If you like barbecue, you like this thing. If you, if you like Jimmy's for anything, you, I, I always call well, Jimmy's. Yeah, exactly. Way, but, but if you like that, you'll have fun. If if you if you like history, you'll have fun. If you just are curious what this thing is, you'll have fun. All we can do is praise each other. That's true. <laughs> we've, we've actually had nights when it's spring. We've never had a real rain shower on the night that we've done it. So right. hopefully, hopefully that won't be the case this year. Well, I appreciate right. you coming yeah. on the show. No, no problem, buddy. It was awesome yeah. meeting you. Look forward so, to it. Uh, Gary keeps saying that, that you, you, you've got to have him on there. He's a character, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I sometimes wander off and I may be getting myself lost, but we're doing all right. We, we are on track. No matter where we are, we're on track. Oh, that's